Hello, my name is Lindsay, and I want to welcome you to the Fire Assembly with Reverend Eastwood Anaba at Desert Pastures, where God makes rivers in the desert. We pray that the word you're about to receive will transform your life and renew your thinking. God bless you, and enjoy. Can I hear you? Amen. Are you happy you are in the presence of God this morning? You want to lift up your hand and just wave it unto God as a form of worship. Just wave it unto God. Just thank Him. This morning, we want to thank God this morning for a successful Bethesda in the name of the Lord Jesus. Just begin to thank God that you have been around for all these days of the program and that the Lord has been good unto you, and you just want to wave unto him. Just give him praise. Just give him glory. There are many that are crying. There are many that are wailing. We are not special. It is by the grace of God. There are many on sick beds, but you are alive. There are many who wish to stand, but they cannot, but you can stand. Just begin to think about the goodness of God upon your life, upon your ministry, upon your marriage, upon your family. Just begin to give God a praise in your own special way. Just pray this morning and thank him, O oh God, for how far he has brought us in the name of the Lord Jesus. I want to hear someone pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. We thank you this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus for your grace upon our lives. We thank you, O oh God, for your mercies. We thank you for everything that you have done concerning our lives. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, we thank you, O oh God, that from the first day of Bethesda up till now, Lord, you have been merciful. You have been a blessing unto us in the name of the Lord Jesus. You want to lift up the senior pastorate into the hands of God. You can see how much effort that they have put into this program just to ensure that through them, our lives will be impacted. You want to pray for Reverend Issue. You want to pray for Rushmore in the name of the Lord Jesus. Pray for them. We lift up our Father in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we ask you in the name of the Lord Jesus that you continue to bless them, O oh God. Just pray for our father and our mother that they will be blessed as well in the name of the Lord Jesus, that they are coming in and they are going out will be blessed in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. You want to pray that any aspect of their body that is feeble, that strength will come into it in the name of the Lord Jesus, that they will continue to do that which the Lord has called them to do, even on this land in the name of the Lord Jesus. Just pray for them. Lebran, Diniman, in that name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we lift up our father, we lift up our mother into your hands, uh, and we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus uh, that every aspect of their body that is feeble, we pray for your strength. Uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that every virtue that have left them, O oh God, uh, I pray for replenishment in the name of the Lord Jesus. Lebran dabalabu sibrian dabalahanta hai. In the name of the Lord Jesus, uh, just pray for them in the name of the Lord Jesus. Lebran da balaban dinini manda bahaya, that no exhaustion of God, uh, but strength will come upon their lives uh, like never before. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, just continue to pray for them. Even those of us who are just participating and we are not preaching, we are not doing anything, you can feel some tiredness in our body, but you want to imagine the kind of investment in terms of their time, in terms of preparing the message and coming to preach and to stand on their feet all this while to just to bless our life. Just pray for them. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus and availing themselves to be used by the Spirit of God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we thank you for the lives of our father and mother. And we ask in the name of the Lord Jesus that you will grant unto them energy and grace to survive the times in the name of the Lord Jesus and to be a blessing unto us in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. We give you praise. 
Right now, you want to pray, commit yourself into the hands of God. That even as you have entered, David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. You want to pray that the Lord will be a blessing unto you this morning, that you will not enter and leave the scene, but something will be impacted upon your life this morning in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. You also want to pray for Agape and for the bull, that even as they lift up a song, that the song, all of us will be inspired by the songs they will lift that we will sing to the glory of God. We will dance to the glory of God. We will worship to the glory of God. You want to pray for the ushers. You want to pray it for yourself uh, that you will comport yourself in a manner and a way that will bring blessing upon your life. Uh, and finally, you want to pray uh, that even as we end this program and many return to their destinations, uh, you want to pray for the safety of the Lord, uh, for those that will be in the air, those that will go on land, uh, those in the name of the Lord Jesus that came from far and near, that all of them will return in safety in the name of the Lord Jesus. Just lift up your voice and begin to pray ahead of time uh, that they will be secured in the name of the Lord Jesus. We thank you for Agape. We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that you will anoint them, O oh God, that even as they lift up for oh God a song, uh, let all of us be inspired and let us all in the name of the Lord Jesus be blessed by the administration in the name of the Lord Jesus. We lift up for God the ushers. We lift up each and every individual in your presence this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus that you will cause your spirit to come upon us strongly that we will all celebrate and we will all worship in a manner that will bring glory and honor to your name in a manner of God that our own lives in Jesus name we will see change in Jesus mighty name. We pray safety upon our airways uh, and upon the land and the roads in the name of the Lord Jesus uh, that even as we end Bethesda today uh, and from tomorrow as many begin to travel we pray for mercy we pray for your grace to cover them uh, we pray for traveling mercies in the name of the Lord Jesus uh, that everyone will return in safety to the glory and to the honor of your name uh, that none will dash their foot against a stone uh, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. We pray in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus that everyone, oh God, of us, wherever we came from, I pray that you will take us back safely to our destination. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, we give you praise and we give you the glory in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let's clap and receive the bowl. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody give the Lord another clap offering this morning. And if you kindly just walk to somebody, greet the person, tell the person good morning, tell the person you're welcome, tell the person memawachi, any akwaba, tell the person bulika bulika la hozare, tell the person bonjour. Bienvenue. Any language that you want to tell somebody in, just go ahead. In the presence of God, there's liberty. Hallelujah. The Lord reigns. The Lord reigns. The Lord reigns. Let the earth rejoice. Let the earth rejoice. Let the earth rejoice.
Praise the Lord. Somebody kindly take your seats and put your hands together for the Lord and be seated in heavenly places. Uh, somebody will say that sits on the necks of your enemies. Put your hands together for the Lord. Praise his holy name. This is Resurrection Sunday, and let us see some resurrection praise in your on your lips, in your life this morning. Let me see you wave, just wave. Those of you watching us, just wave unto the Lord, because we are seated in heavenly places. Oh, Jesus, heaven on earth, heaven on earth, heaven on earth. Hey! empowering the kingdom of the Lord is within me and it's calling me to the heavenlies yes just like heaven just like heaven hey to be Lightning is up! 
praise the lord lift up your hands and i want you to worship god this morning and give him praise somebody thank him magnify the name of jesus give him glory give him glory give him glory give him glory father in the name of jesus unto you be praise and glory we bless your holy name for this morning we ask that you move by your spirit we ask that you touch every life we pray in the name of jesus that unintended explosions will lead us into the places of victory and glory in jesus mighty name amen you may be seated and god bless your life give a big clap offering to jesus and add a shout to it and then just praise the name of the lord our god well we want to thank god for everybody's life today and um, i'm so glad that the vice chairman of the fountain gate chapel is in the house even with his wife the reverend jato to is in the house and the pastors of the fountain gate chapel god bless you for being in attendance this morning and then um, pastor mike good morning with your wife and mommy is in the house we thank god for everybody the lord mightily bless you now as you know sunday morning normally is a we call it a drive-through service um we come in quickly and then we get out quickly especially knowing we are coming back this evening this evening we are coming back for kia and incidentally the kia is the end of our bethesda convention so it's going to be very powerful every kia every eam um partner every kia follower and every desert pastures fountain gate uh, member will be involved it will be powerful but this morning my message is very short and i hope to um conclude it quickly because um there are some two things i would do before we finish the service um when you look around in life most of the things you see are unintentional i know there are many intentional things but in the spirit there are many unintentional things um i see unintentional plants growing everywhere you just get up and oh and the international coordinator is in the house and pastor forson and his wife nana thank you so much now you see many unintentional things you see weeds when we, we normally call them weeds but the truth is that they are unintentional plants and the, the unintentional plants they explode they explode they, they, they explode they just grow you just find them growing everywhere and unintentional things unintentional things um and some of the unintentional things end up becoming powerful in our world one of the things that we we will have to get ready for is unintentional anointings and explosions that even in the early church some of the early disciples exploded in some parts of the world beyond jerusalem not by intention and not by plan so he said you will preach the gospel to every every creature throughout the world and these signs will follow them that believe in my name they will cast out devils they will speak with new tongues they will take up serpents if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them they shall lay their hands on the sick and they'll recover so these disciples knew that god had anointed them with miracle working power a lot of the things they did were unintended they didn't intend that you see normally when you hear people and they talk about um oh people are forming all these churches because they are looking for money and they are forming the churches because of this talk to many many church founders they didn't intend what they were doing um i knew i'll be a preacher i knew i would preach but my idea of preaching was that i'm finishing school i'm coming to the upper east region maybe i'll be in my baptist church quietly where i was a member i'll be in my baptist church quietly i'll have a bicycle i'll go to a village and preach and come back and then do my pharmacy and um that that is it you, you you didn't think beyond that level but one thing after another kept throwing you into something before you realize you are there 
before you realize you're there, before you realize it's Fountain Gate Chapel, before you realize some EAM is coming up, then you wake up and some KIA is coming up. And a lot of these things, although we normally say we dreamt about them, we dreamed about them, we knew it was coming. The truth is, you had an idea, you were moving, you knew some kind of energy, you knew something was driving you, but many times you don't really know what is coming tomorrow. And so, so in the early church, there is a man called Philip, and they, they brought in Philip, and the, the reason why they brought in Philip was that there was a problem of food, that they have to distribute food to the, to the, to the Christian women who were complaining, and other Jews in the, in the church, and they needed food, so they looked for people who were full of the Holy Ghost, people who were of honest report, and people that were full of faith, and they said, let us commit this business into their hand. And the business they gave them was not a business of um, coming to um, preach. The man was not called to preach. Um, Philip was not called to preach. They brought in this man, Philip, and he's coming to do business, and the business has to do with just giving people food to eat. There was nothing preaching in it. There was nothing casting out devils in it. There was nothing raising the dead in it. Everything about Philip was food. Just come and help us feed the people. That is all the man was called to do. And then persecution broke out. Well, the chairman of the Fountain Gate Chapel is in the house. The Reverend Danny Siedu, thank you so much. Thank you with his wife. Harriet, God bless you. It's good to see both of you. Now, so, th this man is just full of wisdom, full of faithfulness, full of faith. And all his job is to make sure that people get food to eat. Then persecution breaks out. And in the outbreak of the persecution, Philip finds himself in Samaria. And when he found himself in Samaria, my Bible said in Acts chapter 8, and the verse number 4 to 8, that therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Now, so they were scattered abroad. It, it was not an intentional effort to go and preach. They scattered them abroad. Persecution. So everybody was running for their life. The only thing is that they told themselves, we are going to take advantage of this persecution and we are going to preach the gospel. So, They've thrown them, somebody goes here, somebody goes here, another person goes somewhere else. Philip finds himself in Samaria. So these people went everywhere preaching. And Philip went down to the city of Samaria. And when he got into the city of the Samaria, Samaria, he decided, I'm a deacon, but I'm going to preach. I'm a deacon, but I'm going to preach. And he started preaching. And when he started preaching, the results were phenomenal. The Bible said that the people with one accord gave heed unto those things that Philip speak, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits crying out with a loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them. And many that were sick of palsy were healed. The Bible said, and there was great joy in that city. So this is a common, let me say, ordinary deacon. He goes to a town and there's an outbreak. I'm praying that in the year of the explosion that we are talking about, may pastors do things unintentionally. Some of your deacons will just break out. Some of your younger pastors will just break out. That somebody like Prophet Livingston will be sitting in a church and God will just break out in his life. I, I'm just praying that somebody will carry an unintentional anointing and explode unintentionally. I just told you, if you go to Bogatanga right now, most of the, if those of you who are working in Boga, you look at it. Most of the plants we planted intentionally, like millet, like, like corn, like thick, they are all dead. They were harvested and those we didn't harvest, they died. The few plants you see around, 
are only intentionally planted trees. Nobody intended to plant a tree there. And the tree is there. You, you go across the road. The neem trees you see acro across there. Nobody intentionally planted them. They just appeared and they survived. I'm seeing us get churches which we didn't intend. I'm seeing us getting businesses we did not intend. I'm seeing those of you that are believing God for children in your marriage, you will get your babies unintended. That means that particular day, you were not even thinking about children, but something broke loose. May we get unintentional breakthroughs, unintentional miracles. And three things happen as Philip walked through Samaria. Number one is attention. Attention. The Bible said the people with one accord gave heed unto the things that Philip was speaking. With one accord. Pastor, may you get the attention of your people. Businessmen, may you get attention of your city. I pray, you, you may think you are not anointed, but you are going to get attention. The people that didn't listen to you before will listen to you. The people who didn't want to hear you will hear you. The people who thought you didn't exist, they will pay attention to you. I declare in Jesus' name upon somebody's life, may you receive attention you never thought you could get. Anytime you thought you, you spoke, they were laughing at you. But this time around, you will get attention. You will get attention. I said you will get attention. Letters you wrote looking for employment and the employment never came. This time around, you will get attention. Somebody you never say, you never thought would say good morning to you, you will get the attention. Pastor, may you get the people's attention. I remember um, I heard a story about Bishop T.D. Jakes that he was preaching words and preaching and preaching and preaching I think in Virginia Beach or something and nobody was hearing the message he was preaching and preaching and preaching no attention then finally he moved and went to another place and when he got there he didn't change the message the same message but he got the attention of the people Philip went into Samaria and got the attention of the people I see you getting attention. I, I see you getting attention. I see you getting attention. I see you getting attention. Businessman, you are about to receive attention. Unintentionally, unintentionally, people are going to ask, who is that person? Unintentionally, they will locate your Facebook page. Unintentionally, they will locate your Facebook page unintentionally they will locate your application unintentionally people will come to your house unintentionally your business will flourish unintentionally somebody will give attention to you so unintentionally they gave the man attention and the Bible said for unclean spirits crying out with a loud voice came out of many I call it abdication. Unintentionally, this man started preaching. And demons that had occupied people for years started abdicating their truths. I see unintentionally, as you explode, people will get up and vacate the occupancy of their space for you to occupy. I see people get up from their seat and say, sit down sit on my chair sit in my place so philip is preaching and demons are running out of people so that the holy ghost will take over i see a takeover I, something is going to happen in your life abdication for unclean spirits crying out with a loud voice came out of many that were occupied by them and that is what is going to happen in our lives that demons are going to come out of people principalities and powers are going to come out of people that witches and wizards as you preach as you preach as you preach all you are doing is you are preaching and sometimes when you are preaching you don't even know what is happening when you are preaching like reverend erica fifa said yesterday that that the the, the, the people of zarit said 
our noise is driving away their gods and the, the, the noise driving away their gods and the, their gods will not be there to give the fertility to their land. We were only making noise. We didn't know the effect of the noise. In the same way, you will only be praying. But demons will be abdicating their thrones. And demons will be abdicating personalities. I pray in Jesus' name, every word from you will unseat a principality. Every word from you will unseat a demon. You will be casting out devils and you don't even know that you are casting out devils. You will be healing the sick and you don't know you are healing the sick. Look at, look at the testimony that came yesterday. I'm giving people water. I didn't give a woman tissue paper I used to hold it. The water fell on the ground. I dropped them so that the ashes will pick them up and throw them away. A woman who was not an usher picked up one. She said, I have an issue of the blood. I'm going to use it as my part. You read the story yesterday. She uses the part and unintentionally. Unintentionally, the issue of the blood stopped. Listen to me. As long as you are doing something, you will see miracles. Just keep preaching. Just keep doing something. Just keep talking. Just keep walking. Just keep moving. Demons will be vacating their place and you'll be occupying those places. Come on, somebody shout out. Amen. Unintentionally. They are preaching. Unintentionally, they are exploding. And as they moved and preached, number one, they gave them attention. Number two, demons abdicated their thrones. And number three, the atmosphere changed. The Bible said, and there was joy in the city. People, you are called to change your world. And there will be joy in the city. I believe that this young man, Philip, when he went to Samaria, he, he, he had no intentions that he could change the city. This man probably saw himself as too small to change the city. He didn't know he could change the culture of people. He didn't know that he could transform a whole land. But here is somebody, he entered the city. He's just preaching. All of a sudden, the whole atmosphere has changed. A, a city that was full of gloom and doom. All of a sudden, this city is full of joy. He has transformed the economy. He has transformed the people's lives. He has changed the culture. The, the, the wizard, Simon the sorcerer, who used to bind the people, he has lost his influence. I prophesy on somebody's life, you are going to deflate principalities and powers. And you are going to set people free. And you are going to change the atmosphere. May you be an atmosphere changer. May you be a transformer of life and change in atmosphere because of you a nation will change because of you a region will change because of you a district will change i pray in the name of jesus that as you walk about carrying an anointing you know what people don't get too worried about who you are what you have what you don't have sometimes just get up and move here is a man philip persecution just drove him into a place he starts talking Everybody gave him attention. And the people who are giving him attention are the people who used to give Simon the sorcerer attention. The Bible said Simon the sorcerer, he had the attention of the people from the least to the greatest. From the least to the greatest. From the least to the greatest. They gave Simon the sorcerer attention. Philip appears. And I also believe. Reverse equation. From the least to the greatest. They gave Philip attention. And apart from human beings giving attention to him, demons abdicated their truth. And that by the time people give you attention and demons are coming out of people, you will capture the atmosphere. You will capture the atmosphere. You, you will change the atmosphere. You will change the pervading mood in a place. I see you transform a town. May you fill the joy, the city with joy. The Bible said, and there was joy in the city because 
one man preach Jesus told his disciples something he said behold the disciples of Jesus came to him when he sent them and said go and preach the gospel heal the sick and cast out devils I'm sure some of those disciples looked at themselves and they are like how can I cast out devils me cast out devils it's not possible but when they went and started preaching demons were coming out of people and they came back to <coughs> they came back to Jesus and they said even the devils were subject to us we saw human beings listening to the word we saw people getting converted but our greatest shock is sir even the demons the demons we've been seeing you cast out even we demons were being cast out we are surprised so we how can we cast out devils and jesus told them he said i beheld satan as lightning fall from heaven that means whatever you are seeing is nothing strange this devil has been falling not from today but from the beginning he is a master in falling he's a master faller the devil has been falling not just today but from the beginning i announced to somebody under the sound of my voice satan will fall in your region satan will fall in your district satan will fall in your business satan will fall in your house just keep preaching even the devils were subject unto us he said don't be surprised that the devils were subject unto you he said i beheld satan as lightning fall from heaven and behold i give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by enemies hurt you i declare authoritatively in this message as i close that many things are coming against you but nothing nothing shall by enemies hurt you sickness will not hurt you death will not hurt you poverty will not hurt you demonic entities will not hurt you you are in a city and they are chanting against you they are using witchcraft against you pastor but nothing shall by enemies hurt you i declare upon your life that nothing shall by enemies hurt you receive from bethesda 2021 receive the power and the anointing and as you go from here may people give you attention number two may demons abdicate their thrones and let you and the holy ghost occupy and number three may you change the atmosphere where you are in the mighty name of jesus lift up your hands and pray receive the three fellowship to partnership
Lift up your hands. I want you to pray. Just pray briefly. Father, in the name of Jesus, somebody just pray. Those that never give me attention, I'm leaving here and they'll give me attention. Father, in the name of Jesus, let demons vacate my family, vacate my life. I bind every demon and every foul spirit and I command it to leave my life to come out of me now and to come out of anybody they occupy in my environment Father in the name of Jesus somebody pray Father let there be joy in my city let there be joy in my house let there be joy in my family in the name of Jesus. Somebody lift up your hand. Say this after me, Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus, I confess that I am anointed. The power of God is upon me. And as I get up, Father, I pray in Jesus' name, people will pay attention to me. Demons will abdicate their truth their thrones the atmosphere will change because of me in jesus mighty name amen you may be seated hallelujah i'm sure some of you are very surprised i can preach short but this is this is this is what we do on sunday morning it's a it's a it's a fast track I've even finished preaching. I'm left with about 10 minutes or 15 of my time. Can you imagine this? Can you imagine this? Because Unu, Nijira Nina Adie Yukutame, and a time is similar. And to go church, Uko Dimechi, because of what you saw on Sunday, on Monday night. Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night. Oh, now that the crazy old preacher on Pong, who the Kugua, sorry. If you want to do church, don't follow me on Monday. Don't follow me on Tuesday. Don't follow me on, follow me on Sunday morning. Watch the way I go about it. It's very different from a night revival. Now, I want us to receive our offering. And we want to do that real quick. We want to do our offering real, real, real quick. Real, real, real quick. Real quick. And today is Sunday. Today is the, is the last day of Bethesda. And I want to challenge somebody. I want to challenge somebody. I want to challenge somebody to give a very small seed like that. I call it very small because what you are doing will, will bring results into your life like you never thought before. At times it's good. You can just leave people to give any offering they want to give. But sometimes if you tell somebody to just give a seed of like 100 Ghana cities, can you imagine this morning if about 200 people, 300 people just decided to sow a seed of just 100, what it can do in the kingdom, for the kingdom, and then what it can do even in their life. He said, any man who leaves father, mother, and follows me, he shall receive 100 food. And God says the 100 for a certain purpose. For example, you see, if you gave an offering of 80 Ghana cities, the question I want to ask is, why don't you make it 100? I remember a gentleman was sowing an, a seed into our ministry, and he sent 80,000. In fact, the first thing I saw was 80,000 as the seed into the ministry. 80,000 Ghana cities. And, well, I didn't think much about it. But later on, I realized the checks were two. One was 80 and the other one was 20. When you add them, you get 100. I said, okay, the 100 makes more sense. So, 
That seed was 100,000 Ghana cities. Because if you can give 80, then it's likely you can give 100. And the last time I checked, 100 is more handsome than 80. Why, why would you want to give an offering of 70 Ghana? Or an ugly one like 56? Although your number in school was 56. That is why when you were 56, you were always failing. Because the 56 is no good. Even car number plate, when you are going for the car number plate, you want a good number. So people go and they actually lobby for the number. Give me something, something, 1,000, something, something. So you read in the Bible and you see these numbers and they keep repeating themselves. 100 and 1,000 and so on. It's 70 and, and, and 70 souls, 120 people in the upper room. Whenever you see a figure like 123, that maybe God sent 123 people, it's very likely maybe he sent 120 and three people went and mingled with them who were not called. But God is not likely to send 123. Bless your obedience. May the Lord bless your obedience. Wow. I like that smoke. That smoke must give this offering. The Boga Naba is in the house. Kings have come to the brightness of our rising. Now, another number which I like in the Bible is the number 50. Because 50 is a number for harvest. Can somebody sow a seed of 50 today? It's the last one I'm calling. It's the last one I'm calling. Somebody take a seed of 50 and say, I'm sowing this seed right now. There are times in life the seed you sowed is, the, is, not, it, it, it's good, but there may be another seed you have to sow that would tip it over. Sometimes you sow the seed of some 50, some 40, some 100, and so on and so forth. And there's another 50 you can just add, and that 50 will just blow you out of the water. Thank you, Jesus. And where is somebody's seed of 20? Get up and move. 20 is more handsome than 17. If you are holding 13, change your mind. America, they even avoid the 13th floor. When they get to 13th floor, they say haram, and they pass. They go to 14. Somebody take 10. The last time I checked, 10 is a very handsome seed to sow. And when I also checked, 5 was a very nice seed. 5 was a nice one. And I looked again, and I saw that even one is a nice seed because the Lord thy God is one God. Somebody can be given a seed of one, and that is all the person has in life. And God really treasures that one Ghana seed, one dollar. Somebody come on, sow your seed. Maya godene sekebo akataba. Here comes heaven on earth through me. I'm his vessel on earth. Here comes heaven, here comes heaven, here comes heaven on earth. Of God is truly here. 
Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we give you all the glory and honor. Thank you for the giving of your people online. Thank you for the giving of your people in person. We give you all praise and glory. We ask in Jesus' name, bless the offerings of your people. Your holy name is glorified forever. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Wonderful. Somebody come on, give a big clap offering to Jesus. Now, in case you came here this morning and you have your tithe, last week was our, our tithe day, so if you came here and you have your tithe with you, can you stand to your feet? Stand, stand to your feet, let me have the honor and blessing of receiving your tithe. Thank you so much. You have no idea what your tithes do. What we decided at a certain point in the church is um, let's believe God to have faith in him and, and, and be faithful. You see, exercise faith and be faithful in the tithes you bring. So that, that was the time we decided that instead of pledges to build church buildings and every day we are receiving a pledge and we are going to receive pledges to build a church building and we are writing people's names down and long list like lotto numbers, we decided why don't we stop that and let's rather believe God that the tithe you bring, we will be faithful in, in, in using that money. And since we started that, by the grace of God, we are able to do our projects, we are able to take care of people, we are able to do things in the church that are amazing. And that is because you have been faithful with your tithe. So faithful people, just lift up that tithe. Let me pray over it right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the tithe of your people. We give you all praise and glory. We ask that every offering be blessed, every tithe be blessed. Open the windows of heaven. Pour out a blessing upon your people in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and rebuke the devourer for their sakes. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, find, one, find the nearest basket to you. Oh, did I have to call for the song again? You joke, I'll bring Don Sin into the house. Because me, I have him hiding in my table there. I am the here comes give a big clap offering to him. Amen, amen, amen. By the way, I must commend the, the choir, the ladies, your, your color, your dress, super, super, super. The Lord bless you, super. Come on, clap for them. And You know, people, at times when you sit in church, you take things like that for granted, like the way the Barak hands are dressed, you take it for granted, but 
when you join some of the departments, it means that your pocket must be prepared. <laughs> you know, the rest of us, you can come to church anyhow, but they must be dressed in a certain way. And, and they don't have uniform allowance. You, you, you will have to find your own money and you have to get these dresses and you have to, to appear and well and so on and so forth. So thanks, good music, good appearance. And the gentlemen, you look, you look well. You, you look very executive. And uh, thank you so much, all of you, for your, your wonderful, wonderful, wonderful ministration and appearance. You, you make us proud. The Lord bless your life. Um, I want to do one of two things before I hand over. I, I intentionally try to kill the time because there are two things I have to do which are very important. Um, I think both people don't know what is going to happen. Um, but I felt it is important. Um, and I still want to do it and kill the time so that the second service or the second assembly, the, this one, we call this one the fire assembly. And the second one is the rain assembly, okay? So before the rain assembly, I just wanted to make sure that the rain assembly is 10 o'clock. And I didn't want us to miss the time, but there are two important things we have to do. Um, sometimes, instead of talking about Aquila and Priscilla in the Bible and talking about Phoebe in the Bible and talking about Dorcas in the Bible, there, there are times we have examples among us and we just ignore the example as if it doesn't exist. This morning when we got up at home, mom and I, the person we talked about most in the room before we left, we talked about him and talked about him and talked about him. And mommy gave me testimony about him and testimony about him and testimony about him. So I said, oh, then it, it would be nice for me to introduce him to the church. And he will say some of the things the Lord has been using him to do. Like build a house and put children in it. And they are persecuting him. At first he's renting a house to put children in it. Then later on he's building a house and putting children in it and looking after them. Um, we don't see a lot of this. Um, when we come to church, all we know is that preaching is going on and the gentleman will just be shouting, Hey! 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 And many of us think that that is all about A. Until you know that apart from A, there's car. There's key. There is more to the man than that. And today is his birthday. Pastor Daniel Naile. Today is his birthday. Oh, this man has encouraged you so much that you cannot be sitting like this. Today is the man's birthday. Today is the man's birthday. This is the man who encourages everybody. The first time I was preaching in this church and I saw somebody was brave enough to get up and stand in front of me and say, tell them. <laughs> I think he has now withdrawn the tell them and it's become a, and yesterday he added other sounds from the zoo. I don't know whether they were grrr or they were grrr something he added. But this man is doing some amazing things. And I need us to come, him to come and use five minutes. So I cut my message short so I can give time to him so that five minutes he should just stand up here and just give us a testimony in five minutes. I know you are, you are Daniel and you don't want to remain in the lion's den for long. So five minutes should be all right. Just tell us. I'm just interested in what do you do? Who are you? Apart Amen. from A, you know, what, what should we know about you? Especially, what are you doing with those children? We, we, are, we are curious to know. You may be seated and God bless you. All Amen. right, so ladies and gentlemen, Pastor Daniel Naile. Hallelujah. Amen. Daddy, thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you, my fathers, my brothers. I'm very humble. Hallelujah. Um, I joined Fountain Gate Chapel in 1996. And um, by then, I did not even set my eye on daddy. 
I said here that uh, daddy is an open check for us. One day, uh, I happened to go to Kumasi to buy a jitai. And uh, my money was not up. And a person asked me, and I introduced myself by using Fountain Gate. And he asked me, is that Reverend Edward? And I said, yes. I said, oh, that man, he trusts him. And the way he trusts him, he also trusts me. He gave me the, he gave me the guitar. And I don't know him. He doesn't also know me. And by then, I haven't come to Bulga yet. I have not set my eye on daddy yet. And I've started to enjoy him. Hallelujah. But Fountain Gate Chapel have transformed my life. It has made my life very beautiful. Um, as I, many don't know me, but uh, the Lord is using me a lot to bless the family. Hallelujah. Currently, I have, uh, by God's grace, I've been able to take care of about uh, 11 uh, children of mine who have completed university. And then they are working. They are working at my hand. Um, I'm doing business at Echimai, and I'm, I'm selling cement. I'm a cement distributor and doing construction all along. Hallelujah. But uh, life has not been easy, but I trust God, and God is using me. Anytime I come here and look at what daddy is doing, it's an me, and I encourage. Recently, I just gave uh, a scholarship to one of my church members, uh, whom the mother gave birth to them about five children, and the husband ran away leaving him. And fortunately, when I get uh, investigate, I realize that the, the woman sister is a pastor in Fountain Gate Chapel here. Uh, I just had the crew, and I said, I'm going to talk to him. And God is using us a lot, and God is blessing me. Hallelujah. I'm taking care of about the people that are artisan under my control. There are more than 20. I've taken care of them. Some are masons, some are carpenters, some are welders. I take care of them free. And when you come to my house currently, people that I'm taking care of them are more than 20 people. I feed them every day, take them to school, and a lot. If I mean to talk, it's a lot. God, Daddy, in fact, anytime I come here, your life becomes a mirror into my life. Whatever you are saying and you are doing, I just pick it and go and implement it, and it's been a help to me. God bless you, Daddy. Thank you very much. Uh, can you stand here, sir? Come on, can you stand and appreciate this, this wonderful, this wonderful, please. Please. Now, so you see, sometimes the people walk about and you take them for granted. One of the things we have to specialize in doing in life is to recognize the people among us who, are, who don't look complicated, but they do things. It's very easy for you to take for granted. Very easy. Very easy. Just by the fact that the, the person decides to be simple, you can take the person for granted. But we really appreciate you. We really appreciate you. And for me, and for me, the very first time I got to know the kind of things you do, I was shocked. Because the man stands and tell them. And one day he scared me. Mommy was preaching. I thought he was coming to beat her up. Because the way he charged on her, I nearly said, hey, my friend. And he tell them, and he's coming. And I'm like, okay, yes, you are sir. <laughs> but, but, but we love you. We love you. And any time you come to this house, you make such a difference. You make such a difference. And on your birthday, we place this oil on your head. And we pray that 
Bethesda will be true in your life. Just as Jesus told the man, take up your bed and walk. May you help many to walk. May you help many to see life. Every seed you've sown in the lives of young people, the ones you raised, the ones you helped, may God bring you more help to help them. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Come on, Pastor Yao, sing it for him. Sing it for him. of God is here kingdom of God is here yeah. Father, in Jesus' name, and we pray for our online followers this morning. The prayer topics that they are sending and the fellowship that they are giving to us this morning. We ask that you bless them, answer their prayer in the name of the Lord Jesus. And we pray that this fellowship will have comprehensive impact in the life of those that are here in person and those that are online to the glory and the honor of God Almighty. Amen. So those of you that are online, you are welcome to the service. We want to thank God for your life and we want you to know that you are very, very much part of this house. Just keep following and the Lord bless all of us and we will go through this hard period of the existence of humankind on earth with this coronavirus pandemic. A time is coming. We will not see face mask again. We will not see social distancing again. And life will be normal. Come on, somebody give a big clap offering to Jesus. Well, yesterday we had the joy and the pleasure of um, electing a new, of, of inducting our new chairman of the International Presbytery, who is the um, highest human authority. Highest human authority highest human authority of the Fountain Gate Chapel. Now, he is not the highest human authority in terms of just administration. But even spiritually, any role I play as a founder and then as somebody you will call your spiritual father is, um, is an honor you are giving to me. It's a privilege but it's not a right. So, if I say 14-day fast, and the chairman of the church says 30-day fast, it will be 30 days, but not 40. So, if I'm doing KIA here in this building, and the chairman thinks the KIA is conflicting with the vision of the Fountain Gate Chapel, the chairman can tell me this KIA is a problem. You have to stop it. What I mean is the chairman of Fountain Gate Chapel is not just a, it's not a ceremonial position. It, 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 it's not an office with disrespect. So, even me, 
or Reverend Clement Ancheba. We answer to the chairman of the ministry and the church. I want you to know that, understand it, let it sink into your spirit. The pastors, let it sink into your spirit. The Bible said, let this mind be in you, which also was in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, taught it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. There are times you and somebody can be at the same level, but for the sake of godliness, you will have to humble yourself and come below the person so that God's name will be glorified. So that God's name will be glorified. For years, I've given you a scripture, Isaiah 11, the verse number 6, that the wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. The fatling, the calf, the young lion, and the little child shall lead them. The, 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 the calf, the young lion, the fatling, together, and a little child shall lead them. If they are divided, a little child cannot lead them. But if they are together, even a little child will lead them. Do you know why normally it is possible for a little child to be the shepherd? And I've seen shepherds in my village. And you see a little child, and he's leading about 50 cows. And all the 50 cows are following him. All of them follow this little boy, little boy. And about 50 cows, 20, 10, are following this tiny guy. The reason he can lead those cows is because they are together. But I'm telling you, if they had scattered, this little child can never lead them. So I was of the conviction. And I kept telling mommy every day that if elections are done for Fountain Gate chairman, and they even elect Pastor Ben Tibila from Boku, we will submit to him and the ministry will work. So yesterday we elected Apostle Danesiedu as our chairman. We inducted him into office together with the IP. And I want to invite Pastor Mike to read his um, profile. And after reading the profile, I'll bring him up again with the, with the, with the International Presbytery and we will introduce him. We will introduce them to you. So shall we receive Pastor Mike? Hallelujah. Oh, put your hands together. Let's give God praise. Before I read the profile, Daddy, thank you very much for the word of God this morning. It's been a blessing. It was not even up to your normal introduction, but we ended all the same. I was like, introduction, Ukraine, my. This morning, when I was told to do this, I, was, I didn't have what um, they had yesterday, so I decided to look for him on the media. And I remember a story. I went with a pastor. I won't mention the name to preach. And he was, uh, the host didn't ask for his details and went on Google and found information which looked like his. And then he started reading. The man has been to Brazil. He has been here. And the man was saying, that's not me. <laughs> he says, it's not me. <laughs> so this morning when I was trying to do that, I remember the story. I said, be careful you don't go and talk about somebody else. But let's put our hands together for our Father. Thank you very much for the word of God. Amen. I have the privilege and the honor to be um, inviting or bring up stage the uh, chairman presently and going through the profile. At least uh, the privilege of being the second pastor to have introduced him because Pastor Aaron already took the first yesterday. Reverend Daniel Asiedu. He was born on the 31st of May, 1968. That is just one month. I'm one month older than you, so, sir. <laughs> we are both 68. I love the 31st May, and you are born in the month of our father. What a blessing. He's a Ghanaian minister of the gospel. He's a top-notch banker a chartered accountant, and trained as a mechanical engineer. He is married to Reverend Mrs. Harriet Asiedu, and they are blessed with four children. He is currently 
uh, he was before his present position as the chairman of Fountain Gate Chapel, the vice chairman of the Fountain Gate Chapel um, Presbytery. From 1994 to date, he has worked in several organizations, both in Nigeria and Ghana, notably Price Waterhouse Coopers, well 10, Zenet International Bank, Volta River Authority at Abuazi. From 2010 to 2016, he was the managing director of the Zenet Bank Ghana Limited. And from March 2016 to July 2017, as the managing director of the Agricultural Development Bank, he is currently our chairman. And um, sorry, I beg your pardon. He is currently the chairman of and lead consultant of Pacific Trust Consult, a private financial consulting firm. Reverend Daniel Asiodu uh, was an associate pastor of Zion Family Worship Center, Lagos, Nigeria, an associate pastor of Fountain Gate Chapel, Takradi. We appreciate Pastor John Achi for being an able lieutenant to have um, ministered along with him and introduced him onwards to uh, Reverend Clement Anchaba. And so he became the Associate Pastor and uh, Reverend Clement Anchaba in the Empowerment and now Gate Pastures of Fountain Gate Chapel, Accra. Thank you very much, Reverend Clement Anchaba, for um, your able leadership and putting the people together and bringing them to places of authority. Uh, from 2006, okay, Reverend Daniel Asiedu was appointed was elected and inducted into his present office yesterday as the chairman of the Fountain Gate Chapel. I would like you to be on your feet and help us put our hands together and let's just celebrate this wonderful, wonderful servant of God. Clap your hands. Oh, let's receive him, please. Let's receive him and his dear wife. Thank you very much. Amen, amen, amen. And um, I would like Pastor Mike to do us the honors of um, inviting the rest of the IP name by name to join them. I don't know whether you have the list. I, I didn't prepare us for that. But what we can do is si simply to bring the international coordinator up and then he can invite the rest of the IP. All right. Sir. Thank you, sir. Shall we put our hands together for our vice chairman of the International Presbytery, Reverend Jato. Let's receive him upstage. Let's receive him. Clap your hands. Give God praise. Let's receive also our international coordinator, Reverend Emmanuel Forsen. Let's put our hands together and receive him upstage. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. The Lord bless you. And let's appreciate all our international presbytery members who are in-house. Please come upstage, all of you, so that we can quickly move on. Um, Okay, Reverend Manuel Fossen is going to go by your name so that we can, the church can recognize you and know you personally. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, look, praise God. Uh, we have Reverend Bernard Achaba. <laughs> Reverend Anthony Jajra. Reverend Dako Tibujani. <laughs> Reverend Dr. Alfred Pieter. <laughs> Reverend Grant Bomo. <laughs> Reverend Selena. Reverend Mrs. Selena Dabo. <laughs> Reverend Mrs. Vicentia Adam. Vicentia Mensan. Reverend Sylvester Agalga and Reverend Isaac Mensa. Hallelujah. 
Oh, I said hallelujah. I need to hear you. I said hallelujah. All right. Thank you very much, Daddy and Mommy, and uh, good morning to all of us. Um, I don't even know where to start from, but let me start uh, by thanking all of us for ensuring that we've had a very successful Bethesda 2021. So let's appreciate God. It's, it's been a wonderful session. And, and, and yesterday we had the induction ceremony like uh, our father has just said. And I will give all glory to God. Um, yesterday, um, I was saying in my acceptance speech that uh, for me, it was perhaps this is the height of my life. Not just this is the height of my life. Because, um, I mean, there are some shoes you don't dream of one day um, wearing. Uh, you, uh, cleaning the shoe, is, 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 you won't even think about it, not to talk of wearing. And then from nowhere, you find yourself wearing this shoe. It's the height of my life. And I think if God were to take my life today, I will be fulfilled. And I know he won't because he has an assignment for me. And so, um, and I went ahead to say that um, I am not the most anointed. I wasn't there when the ministry started. I am not the most intelligent, borrowing the words of my father. I am not the most brilliant. I am not the most qualified. I haven't even been to a Bible school. We have some of our fathers who have been to Bible schools and all that. And so, and uh, if I look at where I came from, where God picked me from, and today I am standing here as a chairman, it's mind-blowing. And this can only be the doing of the Lord, and we'll give him all the glory. So, so what this means is that every one of us who joins this great ministry of ours, if you are committed, dedicated, and you, 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 you do the things of God the way it's supposed to be done, it means that you stand a chance of one day being elected the chairman of this ministry. And I think I can only encourage us that whenever, wherever we find ourselves, let's do our bit. Let's push. Let's be committed because you don't know the agenda and the plan of God for your life. Uh, when, when I was elected, uh, Reverend John Achi called me, um, sent me a text, and then I replied, and I said, Reverend, you made it happen because it started with you. It started with you. So I, 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 I really bless God for the life of, 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 of uh, Reverend John Achi. I remember when we went to Abuadze and how we, we, we just we had heard about, I haven't been in, in, in Ghana, and so my wife knew Fountain Gates. So there's a church called Fountain Gates, let's join. So we visited. And then subsequently, how Reverend Yonachi followed us up and, and how he settled us in, you know, welcomed us, welcomed us, welcomed us. And so, having attribute all the glory to God, I mean, I, I, we can't but also appreciate our father and our mother. You know, I, I, I look at him and, and it's like the man is complete everywhere. You know, he's spiritually complete, physically complete. Complete, emotionally complete, <laughs> materially complete. I mean, you see, when you, when, when you want to introduce him to somebody, you are proud to say, this is your father. You are proud to say it. I mean, you are proud to say it. He dresses well, preaches well, you know, portrays himself well, loves people, he understands the word I mean, and, and, and it's oh, let's appreciate our mother and father and, and mommy has been wonderful as well, mommy, had, mommy has been wonderful, mommy has been wonderful wonderful, wonderful, wonderful mother you know, you know it's how, how, how they make you feel important you know, at this level you find very few men of God that you have access to them but you call them anytime they will answer you you come here every time you want to see them, and they are very simple and down to earth. Mommy and Daddy, we appreciate you. God bless you very much. And uh, we, we, we want to bless God for your life, and we pray to God for you to live to be a hundred and something plus <laughs> for us, for our sake, so that in your old age, we can still come, and then you are still blessing us and all that. So thank you very much. Please, let's be seated. Uh, we cannot 
also forget to thank our own uh, father and our former chairman. I mean, the way he's, uh, he, he's pushed me, you know, and encouraged me into this seat is, is amazing. Yesterday, I was standing there, and he said, look, that is your office. He came and drove me into the office. I said, I said, Daddy, I'm not used to going to the office. I said, that is what you used to say. He said, no, 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 no. I have found myself somewhere. And I'm asked, like, how can I, how can I suddenly? Ah. Daddy, thank you very much. God bless you. Mommy, thank you very much. God bless you. We are grateful to you for your guidance, for your support, for your encouragement. I mean, we always know that you are a true pastor. You are a true, when we are talking about a pastor, you are a true pastor, and we are very proud to be associated with you. All right, and I want to thank, uh, once again, thank our spiritual founding um, ministers and fathers. I mean, without you, this wouldn't have been possible. One of the most difficult things to do is to grow something to a certain level, and then from nowhere you want to just let go. And that is what we have done, and we want to salute all of you. The beauty is that you have all assured us that you are behind us, and once that is, that we have that assurance, the work is done. And so thank you very much. And I want to thank all pastors. All pastors, I mean, it really doesn't matter who you vote for, voted for, who you, you, you align with and all that. That is history. That is gone. What is ahead of us is more important. And so I want to believe that uh, we are together in this. Without you, uh, this ministry is going nowhere. Uh, the ministry has been taken to a certain level, and we are believing God to take it to the next level. And we'll count on all of you joining hands with us to make sure this happens. And we are grateful to all of you. We want to thank the congregation. Again, I mean, you are the, one, the reason why we have been elected. I want to believe God that uh, we will not disappoint you. We will do that which we can to make sure that you'll be proud of this ministry. And while saying that, I want to encourage you to support us in your prayers and make sure that uh, you do your quota to, to support this ministry. And as for the IP members, I want to thank you once again for agreeing to work with me to make sure that we take this ministry to the next level. And, and let me assure us that God being on our side, we will do all that we can to make sure that we don't disappoint you. God being our help, we will, we will. It's a big shoe, but we will not disappoint you. Uh, I preached here, I think on Friday, and I said one of the things the grace God has given me is that whatever my hands find, find to do, I do it with all my heart. I do it very well. And so if I have to relocate to even Borga to make sure that I get this done, I will. Any land that I have to go to to make sure that this job is done and done well, I will. And I know I have the backing of the IP. And so thank you very much, Daddy and Mommy. Thank you very much, my father, Reverend Clement Anchaba. Thank you very much, pastors, once again. Thank you very much, congregation. We look forward to taking off. And we believe that we'll take a great ministry to the next level. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the IP. Oh, just remain standing, please. We thank you for the IP. We ask in Jesus' name that you bless our chairman and bless his team. And we ask in Jesus' name that their work will be fruitful and enduring in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, God bless you, IP. Everybody be seated. And this morning, I'm so excited to see... Um, the churches of um, Fountain Gate all over the place. I'm seeing um, the gate pastures. You are welcome to this service. I'm seeing the liberation pastures. I'm seeing the divine pastures in Pelungu. I'm seeing Agathos. I'm seeing sanctuary pastures, Sakumono glory pastures, spirit life pastures. I'm seeing green pastures. I'm seeing um, Tamale desert pastures i'm seeing jubilee pastures i'm seeing love pastures Ajringano. i'm seeing konongo i'm seeing um his presence pastures i'm seeing um i don't know i i don't know whether it's denmark i'm seeing i'm seeing somebody like um pastor charles Rimpong. okay so that's denmark i'm seeing um praise pastures takima and I'm seeing um, Wonder Pastures and um, Wenchi. I think that is Prophet's Church. And I'm seeing, um, yeah, Wonder Pastures. You are really wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And Faith Pastures. I'm seeing Victory Pastures. I'm seeing Change Pastures all the way from Cape Coast. 
Wow, they are also up there. God bless you. I'm seeing agape pastures. Na Naile, Joel, Dwori. Wow, wonderful. Now, are you connected to the... What was the relationship? Come again. Oh, it's your brother. Wow, well done. And then we are seeing Laura Rehoboth. We are seeing Dominion Pastures. The churches are all over the place. Now, I want us to do something this morning. Today is our convention morning. And I want all of us to give a seed to the IP. You know, you know um, if there is an international presbytery, they don't work with cowries. And they don't work with um, um, where it comes from, Winneba. I don't think they work with Keta School Boys. He, he must, he must, they must work with money. The Bible said that money answered all things. And we, as a former banker, if you don't put money in his hand, the, the IP will struggle. So I want us to give a seed and an offering. And this whole offering, we are taking it and we are giving it to the International Presbytery of the Fountain Gate Chapel. And we are saying this is seed we are putting into the hands of you to do the ministry. And please, those of you that are online, sometimes you are EAM, at times you are KIA followers, you must remember that without Fountain Gate Chapel, there's no EAM. Without Fountain Gate Chapel, there's no KIA. So it is time for you to give back. Give back. The Bible said, honor your father and your mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. So if you are KIA or EAM and you sow into Fountain Gate Chapel, what you are doing is you are honoring the parent organization or the parent ministry because Fountain Gate Chapel is the, is the parent ministry. I want us to put baskets all over the place. And then those of you that are online, you are joining this offering. Those of you that are online, you are joining this offering. And those of you that are joining by Zoom, everybody is doing this offering. And let's do this offering in five minutes. Is that okay? Five minutes. Shall we get up? Maybe some of you, God will lead you to do some serious donations to the ministry. Go ahead and do it. And the Lord mightily bless your life. Shall we find a basket quickly?
in the name of Jesus we thank you for the offerings of your people we ask in Jesus mighty name that your name be glorified bless this seed bless the international presbytery your name is glorified forever amen come on let's continue here comes heaven on earth the kingdom of god is here Come on, can you clap your hands and praise the name of Jesus? Amen, amen, amen. It's exciting to be in God's house. And um, before we close this meeting, I want to welcome um, one of the nicest people on earth. I call him Barnabas. Um, he's one of the nicest human beings I have ever met. And um, one of the nicest, one of the most faithful, one of the most committed um, somebody you can call a friend I remember my mother-in-law used to say Clement you know so we, we've grown up together like that a man who has added so much value to me um, the one human being on earth who when I'm even feeling naked I don't know where he gets a cloth to just come and cover that nakedness I, I tell him everything. I tell him everything. Between me and him, there's no secret. If I struggle, he knows. If I'm in pain, he knows. If I'm feeling embarrassed and I'm in difficulty, he knows. And some of the things I, I can't handle in life because I'm too weak to deal with them. He will just start, call me, just says, Abuchi, just relax. We are taking care of it. And he will make sure it's taken care of. For me, it's not about him being a preacher or an anointed person. It is about being a brother. And um, so not, not being the chairman of the church will not change anything. I still know I have my brother. I have my brother. And um, at, the, at the EAM governing council, we were, I think Daphne, we were seven. We were seven. And I told them to expand. I told the governing council, the, the governing council of EM is Professor Samoa Jedu, Dr. Joyce Ayi, Dr. Mensah Otabel, Chairman Clement Ancheba, formerly Chairman Clement Ancheba. Mommy is on the governing council. And um, Justice Yoni Kolendi is on the governing council. I am on the governing council. The Daphne, who is a lawyer, my executive secretary is also on it. And I told them, I said, let's do a constitutional review because the new chairman of Fountain Gate Chapel must be on the EAM Board of Trustees because Reverend Clement Ancheva used to be there. But at the same time, he cannot take the place of my brother. I still need my brother on the EAM <laughs> Governing Council. And I told them, and that is because there is no problem I will get on earth in terms of an emergency and then the, the, the person to take hold of that thing and deal with it will not be Chairman Clement Ancheba. It will always be him. So at the EAM level, I need him there. So they, did a, they allowed us to do a constitutional review and, and Reverend Clement Ancheba still remains a member of the Governing Council of EAM. I want him to come and say hello to us because at least you must hear his voice that this thing is not a coup d'etat. They staged against him and just went to GBC to make an announcement but that he knew what was going on. Just some three minutes, five minutes and then after that you do the, the just three minutes, five minutes and after that um, Pastor Mike and Co will take over the service and then we close. I still want to believe that We'll be able to close the meeting at 10 o'clock so that the second service or the second assembly will come in but i want you to know 
the second assembly and need as many of you, especially Sami, who I haven't seen for months. Sami, it's good I've seen you. I'm talking about Sami the Goliath. This one is Sami David. Big Sami. Thank you so much. It's good to see you in the house. And um, I want as many of you as possible to stay over for the rain assembly because Reverend Clement Ancheba will be speaking at the rain assembly. At the rain assembly, Reverend Clement Ancheba will be speaking. And I want you to be here to listen to the message this exemplary gentleman will be bringing to us. But in this fire assembly, suffice it to say, if he just greets us, that will be fine. Shall we welcome Reverend Clement Ancheba? And of course, his wife. Mama Ruth, you want to go with him? Thank you. Come on, somebody, 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 come on, do this thing better. Thank you so much, uh, Daddy Eastwood and Mommy. Please, can we take our seats? Thank you so much. There's nothing this man cannot do. He does everything. Uh, the first thing I'm... When he puts his heart to something to do, he, do, he will do it so well. And so I'm seeing something he's doing and I'm happy. <laughs> the chairman is dropping. <laughs> Once he's dropping out of his mouth, I know it too. But we thank God for him. And uh, church, this is one of the things I have been dreaming for for the last two or three years of my reign as a chairman of this church. The, la the past three years, I've been dreaming for this. And that is because no matter how good you are as a leader, no matter how brilliant you are as a leader, no matter how gifted you are as a leader, if you don't get somebody who can take over from you and you are certain that this person who has taken over is going to move better than you, you have failed as a leader. <clears throat> Amen. So, our last IP, I brought in a lot of people on board. Anyway, let me explain that thing, because yesterday Pastor Mike was drawing my attention. You realize that they are 11. But pastors, you realize that you voted for 9. In our tradition, which we have set up, the chairman has the right to appoint other people to come and help. And normally, that's, we, have been, we have done that for the past two sessions. So it has become a custom. And those people come on board to help, to be groomed as possible leaders to help in the thing. So the three people, some three people were appointed by him. And they are also on. So that makes it 11. Just to explain that. But in my term, I decided to bring in on board other people we taught, we and most of the times I discuss some of my appointment with Pastor Eastwood and Mommy, and we talked about it. The aim is to, for us to include many more people who possibly could take up leadership positions of our church tomorrow. And I can tell you that we have a lot of people who can take over tomorrow. And we are proud of all of you and how you are developing yourself. So that culminated in the choices we made, and now we have a very young man, strong man, a very brilliant man, a very loving man, a very committed man, a man who, when he commits himself to leadership, he will do excellently. And for me, that is my joy, that we have Reverend Daniel Asiedu, our chairman, and his wife. And for the past one or one and a half years, I kept talking to him. My friend, this thing is likely to fall on your head. <laughs> this thing is likely to fall on your head. Think about it. The choices will be made, but the election will be done. But I see the thing falling on your head. So think about it. And of course, the talkings went on. So we are just happy 
that yesterday, the final ultimate thing that I've been desiring has been done by all of us so well. And we just give God the glory. And we thank God for the chairman and the IP who have agreed to serve this church. We pray that God will give you long life and strength and vision to carry this ministry far. All of them are very good people. And my, my, my chairman, uh, Reverend Asiedu and his wife are here and we are happy that they have been introduced to you as a church and to all our online church. We want them to know that is the chairman, that is his wife, and we are all together and we are following. Let me say this and sit down. Reverend Isu, my wife and I said this morning that we'll come into your office to thank you so much. We don't know what to say. To thank you so much. We took over this ring, but you helped us. You gave us all the opportunities. You gave us all the chance. And some of the things he says that the chairman is the chairman of the chairman of the church is a true thing. If you don't discuss your matter with him and you want to go, you go. He will not interfere. But many times we did and we talked because of our friendship level and also because of the fact that he's a founder of the church and he has given over the church to us to run and he has submitted himself to us. We should also be aware that he's also a pastor of Fountain Gate Chapel and if it comes to voting, he too has a right to vote. If it comes to suggesting, he and mommy too have the right to suggest. So sometimes when they also suggest, it's just like any pastor can come to me and suggest anything. We have to take it cool. We shouldn't see it like an imposition. The fact that he has handed over doesn't mean he doesn't have a right as a pastor to also suggest something. And we have to understand that. And that does not mean he's, he's taking over the government, uh, the, the, the rulership of a chairman at all. It just means he's also playing his part as the, even as the senior pastorate of this church. And we have to learn to accommodate it. We just want to thank you and mommy for your exemplary life. Uh, you've done everything to enhance our life too, both in our family area, ministry, and a recognition outside Fountain Gate Chapel. Many places you've sent me to, many places you, you brought me into, like what you are talking about now. The day you spoke those things on the Zoom meeting, your words hit me so hard that when I left, and we were, when, when we closed the meeting, I was just in tears. And that was why, how come I sent you that text? Um, we, we love you. And may God bless you. Desert Pastures, we want to encourage you. We want to stand with you. Uh, I'm out of the chairmanship of the of, of Fountain Gate Chapel, but I'm a pastor and I'm a lover of this church and of all churches. Pastors, now you are my colleagues. These are our bosses. So when I'm talking to you, I'm not talking to you as a chairman. I'm talking to you as a brother, as a senior brother. And so relax and let's talk. And we will encourage ourselves whilst they lead us and we all know how to go. If there is anything, just talk to me and we'll see how we can link out ourselves to help them to lead us. That's all I want from you. So when I call you, I'm not calling you as a chairman, I'm calling you as a fellow minister in Fountain Gate Chapel so that we can discuss things, we can help ourselves. And uh, desert pastures, you will always be there. Desert pastures will all come and drink. I told you, rivers flow from the desert and move into the forest. So this river is flowing and will always be here. Thank you all. God bless you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. We can do better for Reverend Clement and Trevor.